So Matthew chapter one, let's get into it right away. If you've ever been encouraged to read the New Testament, you may have opened up your Bible to the very beginning, Matthew chapter one, and seen this genealogy, just a bunch of hard names that are too hard to pronounce. You don't know who in the world they are, and it can be a really daunting way to begin Bible study. But there's actually a very important reason that the Bible opens up with a genealogy, and that's because the focus of the New Testament is Jesus. And it's important for us to know where Jesus came from in order for us to not only believe that he is who he says he believes, but it is also an evidence of the inspiration of the Bible. Take a look at verse 1 with me. The book of the generation or the genealogy of this man. This is the center point of the gospel. Jesus Christ. And he says that he is the son of David. The purpose of this genealogy is to prove that Jesus is, in fact, a son of David, a great, 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 great grandson of David. And that's important because David lived about a thousand BC. And it was prophesied about a thousand BC, not long after, that, that Jesus would come from the line of David. So that's why this has to be proved, and that's why we have to open up Matthew with this genealogy. And so um, then it goes back even beyond David, and it starts the genealogy when he says that he is a son of Abraham. Abraham lived about 1800 BC, so 800 years before David and 1800 years before Jesus. So let's take a look. I want to make it down through verse 5 today. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was the father of Jacob, and Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. We read about all of these people in the book of Genesis. And another great thing about genealogies is that they actually connect the Old Testament for us. So it's, it's real easy to read the Old Testament and not, and not really know where things fall, like where, where things fall into place time-wise. A lot of the books of the Old Testament are not in chronological order. They're actually out of order chronologically. And so a genealogy can really help us to kind of understand where do these people fit into this story? And uh, we can make some connections. So Verse 2, we read about all these individuals who are famous Bible characters in the book of Genesis. Um, And it's important here to notice that Jesus is a descendant of Judah. So Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had, remember, his 12 sons that became the 12 tribes of Judah. And they all went down into Egypt, and there's that whole story about Joseph And they became the 12 tribes, and Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. So notice that there. As we move to verse 3, And Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar. This is actually, this is a woman here. And when the wives in the genealogies are of importance, or they play a big role in the Old Testament, a lot of times they'll be called out rather than just the men. So Tamar we read about in Genesis, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram, and Ram the father of Amminadab, and Amminadab the father of Nation, and Nation the father of Salmon. So those names right there, those last six or so, don't play huge roles in the Old Testament, so we won't spend a lot of time dealing with them. Verse 5, though, is kind of the heavy hitter of of these first five verses. Let me show you why. And Salmon, who I always want to call Salmon, uh, was the father of Boaz by Rahab. Two really important names in that first phrase of verse 5. The first one is that San, sorry, Salmon was married to this woman, Rahab. Do you remember where Rahab? You remember that name? If you look back in the book of Joshua... Chapter 2, we will find Rahab. And you remember Rahab's profession before um, she plays a big role in the Bible? Her profession was a prostitute. And keep in mind what we're doing. What's the context here? We're looking at the family line of the Son of God, right? You would think that that would be full of like all kinds of good people and amazing people and morally upright people because, hey, it's Jesus. He's sinless. And what we find in the genealogy is actually there's a prostitute, an old prostitute, in the line. Why is that? 
I think there's a lesson there that's extraordinarily valuable for us, and and that is that that your past does not determine your future. God can use anyone, and that means anyone, no matter what your past looks like, for His glory, if you will only give your life over to Him and be obedient to Him. Certainly Rahab was not an, a morally upstanding woman, but she was actually holds one of the highest honors in the Old Testament as being in the line to bring about the Savior of the world. Take a look at the rest of verse 5 with me. There's another important name here, and that is the name of Boaz. Boaz here is the is the son of Rahab and Salmon. And you may remember Boaz from a name from a book in the Bible, not named after him, but actually named after his wife. Ruth. Uh, Ruth was gleaning in Boaz's field, and they, you know, the story goes that they <laughs> end up getting married. And so that's in the book of Ruth. So what we have here, we have Genesis, we have Joshua, and we have Ruth. And so all of a sudden we're beginning to kind of glue together where all these Old Testament stories that are like floating around in our mind come into play. The book of Ruth is actually two books after the book of Joshua. The big book of Judges is in between. But keep in mind, because we know this genealogy and because we didn't skip over it and looked at it, we know that Ruth is really not all that far connected from Joshua chapter 2 and the story of Rahab and the conquering of Jericho. And so, as we conclude this verse, verse 5, and Obed was the father of Jesse. We'll deal with Jesse in verse 6 because Jesse starts a whole other important family for biblical history. And we'll come back to him in our next video. But thanks for watching. Uh, this was a little longer than I wanted it to be. We'll try to cut him down even more. I can stop jibber-jabbering so much. Uh, and so I hope you'll join me as we continue through the Bible.